Are you proud? I know they're making me sound like a <laughs> bit of an ogre, right? No, no. Yeah. no you just seem like a good mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that's what I was supposed to say, right? Yeah. No, yeah. but are, are, you, are you proud that she's written this book? Like, yes. genuinely, are you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because it's really not easy to write a book. I mean, you can talk well, you can write paras, you can write columns, but to have the discipline to actually write that many chapters and make it into a book, I think it's great and well done, Soha. Really, very, very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's so lovely. Um, have you, do you want to read something out of the book? You have an yes. excerpt you'd like to share with us? Yeah, lovely. Um, you want me to share something? Yes, yes, please. If you have an anecdote that you'd love to share about Not as funny ones as all these guys been telling no, you. No, but, but I remember certain things which are really, um, I think I've heard the most uh, sad and poignant sentence from her, which uh, aged, I think, six, which have stayed with me all these years. I remember when we went to uh, Delhi from Mumbai, we made a shift. All of us left to stay with my mother-in-law, who was not keeping so well. And so that meant change of school, change of everything. And one night, I was reading a, a bedtime story to Soha. And suddenly, I found her crying, you know, really sobbing her heart out. So I said, Soha, what's happened? What's happened to you? Why are you crying? And she said, Amma, I cannot remember my friends' faces. And I don't think. I don't think, I mean, just imagine, I think that's the terrible thing if you cannot remember. Of course, I could have produced pictures and photographs, but at that moment, I really felt, that, I mean, how awful it must be for a little girl. And then another occasion, we were walking around Patodi. We have a biggish house and we have a smallish house. Anyway, we were taking a stroll. And suddenly, uh, Sohabia says, Amma, who is Bhai going to marry? And again, she was about six years old or something. So I said, I, I have no idea who uh, Bhai is going to marry. So she says, well, Bhai is a prince. So whoever she, he marries will be a princess, right? So I said, yes, I, if you say so, true. So then who am I going to marry? Where will I find a prince? And then she adds, she says, well, after much thinking, princes are very difficult to find. Like, like domestic staff. <laughs> <laughs> so to distract her, so I looked at this, uh, like I said, we had a biggish house and a smallish house and a kind of a khandar, like a ruin. So we were passing that. So I said, so, so that's going to be your house. You know, when you get married, we'll give it to you. We'll do it up, of course. So she was kind of alarmed. She said, but Amma, that's terribly dangerous for children. And she was six. And then she said, but who's going to look after my children? Can I take uh, Suraya B from Bhopal? So this was really forward planning. But so it's happened to you, you now, and you still don't have a maid. But Suraya B is a couple of older, you know, couple of years older. So I don't think you can have Suraya B. <laughs> she was kind of always into forward planning, even then. Wow, that was a really smart question. It was very sad. I can't remember my friend's face. I know. I mean, just think about it. it. Think about it. So it's really stayed with me. Okay, so I'll read something. Actually, I wanted to read the whole book, but I was told <laughs> that I can't. So yeah, there is a time limit. So this is talking about her entrepreneurship. At the age of nine, I discovered money, and I couldn't get enough of it. I became an entrepreneur. First, I sold cosmetics to the staff, ideal customers who couldn't say no to me. I gathered up all the usual makeup my mother had tossed into the, oh, I gathered up all the used makeup that my mother had tossed into the bin, almost empty bottles of nail polish and lipstick, near the, near bare pots of cold cream, place them on a tray, and march down to the staff quarters. Each item was then sold to my captive consumers for a grand sum of rupees two. Inevitably, there was writing in the ranks, and news of my greedy exploits reached my mother's horrified ears. 
My flourishing business was forced into immediate closure, and I got my first lesson in economic protectionism versus a free market. So I branched out. I packed a small suitcase with plastic syringes, some small towels, a box of band-aids, and a fistful of mints, and went around the house administri administering medical aid to those I thought in need. Headaches were treated with a cold compress, and a mint in lieu of aspirin, joint and muscle pains eased with massages, and injections were given for more baffling ailments. The fee for each visit was again the grand sum of rupees two. My doctor's practice was actually being uh, was quite successful and received much encouragement from all members of the household. I was even offered a handsome sum of rupees 25 from an anonymous investor to buy balms and ointments when I turned 10 and outgrew the business. When I was 12, I was reading the famous five and Nancy Drew books and so naturally, the only possible career option in my mind was that of a detective. My father didn't take well to my following him around the house, jotting down notes on who he was seeing and what he was doing. And that was soon the end of that vocation. The following week, I was enrolled in the Delhi School of Music. First for ballet classes, I was unceremoniously dropped from these within the month with the forthright explanation that I had the grace of a five-legged spider. They're quite graceful, really, spiders. And then for piano lessons, in which I fared only marginally better. My family was then subjected to endless post-dinner recitals of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, and London Bridges Falling Down, for which the, for which the admission fee was, you guessed it, rupees two per person. Twelve years later, at 24, sitting in my corporate cabin overlooking the business hub of BKC, I would ask myself if I'd made the right career choice. And if there was such a thing as the right career choice. I wanted to be financially independent, free to make my own decisions. I wanted to earn enough to lead the lifestyle to which I had grown accustomed, which included air conditioning, travel, a diet rich in overpriced exotic fruit, and adding to my most cherished possession, my ever-expanding library of books. Very nice, Sohab. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this, is, you know, this book is a beautiful tribute to all the people in your life. Uh, like your, everyone on stage here and your father who's not here. And I, I think, I don't know if you guys noticed just now, it's just this beautiful moment, Sharmalaji, when you were reading and she held your sari palu and your son came and held your page for you. And it's just... <laughs> So very sorry. <laughs> it was a really beautiful moment. Um, thank you so much for all of you for sharing your stories. Thank um, you, thank you, Kanish, for hosting this. Yes, for being here. And thank you all for being my family. Are you not going to read anything? No, that's so. Before we go, we'd love for you to. Um, so I know, yeah, like I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's you know, it's a tribute to your family, but there are also a lot of learnings uh, in this book that you've taken away from life. And I know you're going to read a, a, a chap, uh, an excerpt from a chapter. I'll just read a short bit. Uh, there's, a, there's a chapter on travel, which um, was the one that meant the most to me because yeah. travel is such an important part of my life. And I've spoken a little bit about two journeys I took, uh, one into the Sahara Desert and one in Paris. And uh, this is just the end of that. What then is the best way to travel? And must it involve risking one's life by dashing across busy motorways and or exposing oneself to potentially venomous insects as you lie shivering on the floor of a strange man's hut while waiting for the sun to come up. If we can assume that a primary life goal for most people is to have adventure, then yes, it is important to let go of schedule, of comfort, of trepidation. It may not always be fun, but we seek the perspective that distance and change can give. We travel because we know we will come home. And when we do, home is the same, but we are changed, and that changes everything. When I look up at the night sky from my terrace in Mumbai today, it is not mundane and boring, but full of infinite possibility. It is, after all, the very same night sky that has filled me with wonder in Africa. Travel has taught me many valuable life lessons, but one that is most pertinent is that of acceptance. I'm following in the footsteps of superstars, and reprobation is an ever-present risk. It is not unusual for me to feel inadequate, 
to feel frustrated, to feel that no matter what I achieve, in comparison to my parents, my brother, I will always fall short. But when you are standing on the edge of the spectacular Grand Canyon, for instance, and looking into its plunging depths, containing over two billion years of geographical history, you cannot help but feel diminished by the world. There's so much out there that is bigger than you, stronger than you, and that will endure long after you are gone. It inspires you to accept your flaws, your mortality, and the fact that not everything will bend to your will. If you really want to know what grounds me, a modern day princess from a tremendously famous family, it is this awareness. Thank you, so I'm my favorite expert from the book as well. Yeah, um, I cried. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's, yeah, it's just sometimes you need to hear some stuff and your book helped me. So thank you very much for, from me for writing this book because it really helped me and I really enjoyed it. And um, I wanted to, to if, if you guys don't mind, I want to do, I want to play a quiz with you guys. A quick quiz on who knows Soha best. It's the who knows Soha best test. Um, are you guys ready for this? It's a quick, just five questions. There will be points given out. There will be a winner and a loser. Um, <laughs> What's the hamper? <laughs> you will, you will be named in her, the next title of her next book. That is the prize. <laughs> All right, so are you guys ready? It's a quick quiz, yeah? All right, the first question is, who is Soha's favorite author? Really, nobody? No? Okay, uh, uh, who is Michael Connolly? Joe Nesbo. <laughs> Joe Nesbo. Uh, Joe Nesbo. Is that no. the correct answer? <laughs> it's actually, no, it's Margaret actually, Atwood. It's <laughs> Julian Barnes. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> they don't actually know me at all, these people. <laughs> but you're such an eclectic reader, you know, That's from true. Joe yeah. Nesbo to Julian were Barnes they, to were Margaret they Atwood. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well then, you're next to each other on the bookshelf. There we go. So your mom and safe get 10 points each in this first question. All right, the next question is, what makes um, Soha lose her temper? <laughs> yeah, one, one thing that makes Soha lose her temper. Wait, that's the answer? Not, not getting her food on time? Oh. Yeah, but Kunal first. OK. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Kunal. You get the points for that question. <laughs> that's any consolation. No, get better. The, uh, what's the real answer? Yeah, hunger, like anyone else. Okay. Blood sugar falls and you lose. But respect. genuinely, it's canal first. Okay. <laughs> hunger. Okay. Um, all right. Question number three, guys. This is a tough one. And <laughs> do you know? I don't even. You I don't. I, do I know the answer to this? I mean, I think I know the answer. What is the name of the Tagore ancestral home? Oh. Uh, no? Presumably, Amma knows the answer to this. Jora Shaku? Yes, that yes. is the correct answer! <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I was, yeah, I think yeah, this, is, this is rigged. <laughs> no, no, I've got questions for you guys. Well, you supposed to tell us whether you've read the book or not. Exactly, I got all these questions from the book, by the way, guys. So, <laughs> all right, uh, who is Soha's closest, who is Soha closest to in the family? That's a very dangerous <laughs> question right that's now. That's easy. Okay. I'm that's currently easy. sitting next to Kunal Inaya. and my mother. Who's gonna? Inaya. Oh, oh well that's played. That's the most diplomatic answer. Even though I'm furthest most from her right now. Answer. Well played. You can't, can't, they can't have fights after that. No, but yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know Inaya. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yes. Please, Sava. Who is it? Soha is extremely fair with everyone. You'll find that she has time for all of us. She loves us equally and she actually, I have noticed that when you're with her, she gives you a one-on-one -on -one and she's with you when she's with you. I'm actually I'm everyone's okay. favorite. She's it's true. I'm everyone's I mean, she's favorite. Very fond of who are you? Okay, who are you closest to? What do you oh, mean? everyone. Everyone's yeah. close to you and you're no, close to everyone. Everyone loves me the most. <laughs> <laughs> That's your answer, everyone loves you the most. Yeah. All right, great guys, you're going, this is going not so badly. <laughs> Just your mother who knows all the answers to everything. <laughs> okay, the last question. What social media platform does Soha use the most? Twitter. No Anyone idea. know? <laughs> your friends are shouting the answer. Instagram? 
Facebook. That's right. Uh, Instagram. Yeah, I'm quite lazy. I just sort of post on all three. Like, ah. Okay, just yeah. kind of. Uh, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Instagram, everyone's saying. In yeah, sure. Let's go with Instagram. All right. So that's the only one I see her posting on. So you've, you've I been seeing some stalking on Instagram. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, great. You all got that answer, right? So you all get 10 points. I have no idea what points. Who has what points? Where can we redeem these points? Uh, fair. Uh, after, come chat to me after the, the, the conference. And the last question, because there's one last question, and this is a tough one. How many chapters are there in her book? The Perils of Being Moderately Famous. <laughs> 20? What? No. Do you know? 10? It is 20. No, it's 18. 11. 19. Because... You said you're writing the 17th chapter when you write your pregnancy chapter. Nine. And nine chapters. What? <laughs> nine, nine chapters? Karina said nine. Karina, yeah. congratulations, you get 10 <laughs> points. Well, thank you guys. Well done. You played fabulously. You don't thank win you. anything, but now we know a little bit more about Soha. Um, any last words, Soha, that you'd like to no, say no, to everyone no. out there? Or? No, I just want to say thank you again for everyone for being here. And uh, it's, it's really special for me to have really thought about all the memories that I have and putting this together in a book. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's available to buy. Um, and uh, thank you to my family yeah. for being here and Kanis for hosting and Penguin for publishing and, you know, everyone for looking after me, the media for being here, my friends and family. It really means a lot. Uh, and this evening is, wouldn't have been this evening without all of you. So thank you. Thank you so much. So a big round of applause for Ali Khan, ladies and gentlemen. Very special day. Congratulations Thank again. You. Like Thank your mom you so said, it's a huge feat writing a book, and you did it. You wrote a book. All of us just have it on our to-do list and our bucket list, and you did it. You've done it. It's amazing. I think I, now we're going to have... Um, yes, we're going to open the... <laughs> no, not, not yet. But we are going to open the floor uh, for the media out there, a, a quick Q&A. पहले तो ये बताइए कि आप how you are going to handle acting and writing together and what is your next book? Well, uh, I've already finished writing uh, the book and actually the timing was very good because I started writing the book and I discovered that I was pregnant and then I became larger and larger and uh, I was not in film so I could use those eight months to really focus on writing. So it was very fortuitous and um, in fact there's a chapter on becoming pregnant and the pregnancy because that was all I was thinking about. So I said, I might as well write about it. Uh, and now going forward very briefly, um, you know, I'll be going back to work. At the moment, Project Inaya is taking up all of my time. Uh, and after that, uh, I'll be doing Sai Bibi Gangster Returns next. Thank you. Soha, congratulations. It's me. Yeah. Havnaji. Yes. So congratulations, it's been a wonderful evening and I love the way the family spoke. I love the way you read it. I feel so proud of you. And Thank I'm so happy to see Sabha here because one doesn't get to see Sabha so often. <laughs> uh, my question is that um, the there is a family joke, your family joke, that uh, Soha speaks impeccable English and writes impeccable English. And if anybody speaks wrong English, she immediately corrects it. So I think you must be the editor's delight. And I would love to know from the editor because your copy must have had no correction at all. <laughs> you have to ask, Gurbeen is over there. You can't miss her in her silver spangly dress. She has to answer <laughs> this because as an author, I want to know. Wow. She needs an applause for this. Wow. She actually sent it to me to, to look at it uh, and I misunderstood. So I was actually checking all the commas and the punctuation and she said, no, no, no. We have someone who'll do that. You just check the facts. But I'd already done all of that myself. <laughs> Typical Soha. <laughs> Classic Soha. <laughs> yeah, hi Soha. Oh, yeah. Are there any more questions? Yeah, yeah. Someone uh, oh, back there. Hello, hello Sharmila, ma'am. Uh, oh, yeah. Hello, hello. Uh, Sharmila, ma'am, your uh, career is more than 50 years in the film industry. You have seen so much. Uh, today, many people are writing their autobiography. Have you ever thought that you have written something, share your experiences? So much is happening in the industry and in the country. No, I think that's a wonderful idea. 
मैंने सोचा है जरूर मगर एग्जैक्टली यू नो आई बीन थिंकिंग बट आई हैवन रियली पुट पेन टू पेपर एंड सो हाज बीटल मी टू इट मे बी सो आई कैन राइट माई बुक हाउ इज दैट सेफ एक सवाल आपसे भी है कि uh, आप बहुत बड़े बुक लवर माने जाते हैं बहुत किताबें पढ़ते सब जानते हैं आपका नॉलेज भी काफ़ी है अगर आपको एक किताब लिखनी पड़ी तो वो किस मसले पर आप लिखना चाहेंगे और क्या लिखना चाहेंगे My mother did want to write a book once on me, and the title was going to be "Oh Sam." Best seller. Yeah, hello. Can't be. Can't be. Hi, so. Hi, so. Hi, so. Yeah. Uh, congratulations for the book launch. I wanted to know whether in future you will be writing some fiction books too. Oh, are you planning <laughs> some story after that if if kunal hasn't completely crushed her confidence totally i i really uh, feel it i was going to write a book now it would be on the first 6 weeks of parenting because that's all i can think about sounds and like a real best seller it, it would be funny it would uh, be funny it would have you in tears and uh, like i am at the end of every day um but maybe yes i think i would like to explore the limits of my imagination and try and push them right kunal <laughs> yeah i would thank you do you have plans of writing more book arun ki darwa yeah i okay. think so maybe let's see how this one does hi <laughs> soha yeah सो uh, so, uh, बहुत बहुत मुबारकबाद तो पहले तो बहुत बुक बहुत अच्छी थी इन फ्यूचर अगर आपको कोई स्क्रिप्ट लिखने जाए तो क्या कास्टिंग किसको किसको किया जाएगा कास्टिंग कास्टिंग स्क्रिप्ट स्क्रिप्ट डिपेंड्स ऑन द अभी तो कहानी भी नहीं मालूम का सोचा ही नहीं हमने बट क्वाइट स्टार कास्ट ऑन ऑन द स्टेज एट द मोमेंट Yeah, we're going to take the last question. We have one more question. Oh. Uh, so well, uh, hi, sir. Well, sorry, sir. You've asked the question. We're just going to ask uh, one of the audience members. Thank you, though. But yeah. Um, so what was the toughest chapter to write? Hi, Nina. Good evening. Um, the toughest chapter to write was uh, probably the one called a working actor. Um, the others sort of fell together, but really, my struggle has been with. Uh, my my profession as an actor which is such an important part of my life but also the insecurities that come with the comparisons that are made um which are very difficult to live up to and as i said you know they're very big shoes to fill and i have very small feet so uh, that i think and, and striking the right tone um with the readers you know such that i'm talking about my insecurities and my failures and my you know all the, all the learning steps that i've come across but not being too hard on myself i think was the most difficult thing for me so i would write it to in the morning and then i would reread it at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and take away some of it and say no you know it's 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 all right and then so i think that for me was was the biggest struggle hi karina yeah uh, karina jaise ki aapne book padha itna bahut kuch acha laga book pa aapke सब इंतजार कर रहा तैमूर के बर्थडे के लिए क्या क्या कुछ तैयारी है वी एंडेड इट ऑन अ हाई प्लीज प्लीज सेल हिम द या दैट्स व्हाट डिड यू वांट टू नो दैट वाज द लास्ट क्वेश्चन प्लीज गिव इट अप फॉर सोहेल अली खान अगेन लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन थैंक यू ऑल फॉर बीइंग हियर टुनाइट uh we're going to do the photo op now i think a lot of people are waiting for that um, so for those of you who came thank you again all right you guys get to get your photo the chair ke upar khade hoga dekhna bhai aage chalte hain chale kya acha acha bahut mara mari hoga chal jane ka